So this is a product I'm much more familiar with than I thought I would be. It's made by a company called Monogram, and I got the kit called the Creative Console Studio. And the reason I'm much more familiar than I thought I would be is that it is almost exactly the same, in fact, backwards compatible with a piece of gear I reviewed a couple years ago called Pallet Gear. I haven't looked up exactly why the company changed their name, but it appears to be almost the exact same uh, underlying technology. In fact, if you still own Pallet Gear, um, modules, they are backwards compatible in a way that that works perfectly. You can just snap them together magnetically and you'll have access to all those old buttons and you'll only need the one new module, the brains of the whole thing to control everything else. There are many aspects of this piece of equipment that are totally new, namely the design of the buttons. They're totally different buttons and the, the overall layout and the new orbiter module, this big circular controller, which looks a lot like a color wheel for color grading that videographers might use. All of these things have been completely redesigned. So there's a lot new going on. They launched and rebranded pretty close to the same time that Loop Deck also launched a, a new controller called the CT, which um, I have a review about in an older Patreon post, and I have a head-to-head -head comparison uh, video coming soon between these two. But, but today I'm just gonna talk specifically about my thoughts related to the Creative Console Studio. Now, one of the aspects of this system that I really, really love is the fact that you can you can mix and match any, any variation of these, uh, modules to sort of custom fit your specific use case and your preference as a creator. And no matter what orientation and layout that you decide to mount these things, it will generally work uh, with a few exceptions. One, most of the sides of every module have just this flat sort of uh, magnetic attachment, uh, but on each module in one specific side or in one specific area, you'll see these pin connections. And that pin connection has to be in place for the, uh, for the connection to, to snake its way back all the way to the main controlling head. So it may appear that you can click and combine them in absolutely any way that you could possibly want, but that's not exactly true. For example, if I wanted to make just a straight line, let's go like this. Like that, it actually wouldn't work because there are none of those pins uh, connecting anything across each other. I would need another row on top uh, to connect all those pins together. So you could mount like this and everything would be fine. But I haven't uh, come across like a specific setup and orientation that I really wanted that I couldn't somehow get a close approximation to exactly what I needed. It's just one thing to keep in mind if you're picking and choosing exactly how many modules and which modules you want. Think about just draw on a piece of paper or something like that where the pins come out of each module and then how that relates to exactly how you'd want it to sit on your desk. It seems like everything's sort of been redesigned from the ground up. All the buttons, the, the previous Pallet Gear buttons used to just be like these giant arcade buttons that really had a satisfying click to them, but uh, for hundreds and hundreds of clicks editing a wedding or something like that, it got to be almost like too much friction, too much noise. And so they redesigned these to have a little bit of a softer experience, which I really, really like. It's still really satisfying, but um, yeah, just a nice soft experience. Uh, and then the new orbiter ring, I'll get more into that in a minute. That works wonderfully. And it's also got an interior touch sensitive panel. So you can uh, map that to specific uh, functions as well. I found actually using Logic, uh, uh, with music production, you could map this touch sensitive inner circle to be like a really expressive way to change some aspect of a software instrument or something like that. I found it really, really cool for that, but I haven't really used it that much for, for photo editing. Ah, I knew it was gonna happen at least once. So this is the thing I'm most surprised about and is one of my biggest complaints with the original Palette Gear stuff. The magnetic attachment between all the units isn't quite as strong as I would prefer. Uh, it holds up okay in this orientation, but as soon as you start getting more lengthwise or just slightly different like this, if I let go of one side, you'll see it, it's really, really yep, yep, likely to fall exactly like that. I've dropped these a million times because you pick it up thinking it's gonna be rock solid and nothing's gonna move unless you you know, mean for it to, but not true, depending again on the orientation and how many magnets, it seems to do fine when it's more of a, um, a square like this, 
But no, see, even then, it's like, it's just not enough magnet. And that's a problem because on the desk, it actually, it feels great. It's totally solid. Obviously it's sitting on the desk and everything's nice and compact. But as soon as you go to move it, like temporarily or whatever, it just, you, you tend to only pick up one module at a time and you kind of have to move the whole thing as a unit. Um, not a problem if you're only using maybe two or three modules, but I have one, two, three, four, five total, which I think this is probably more or less what most photographers would want on their desk or video photographers or anything. Uh, and I don't even have the sliding modules. They actually have, I don't have any pictures of it, but they actually do have a sliding module that I previously owned with the palette gear collection and just never ever used. So I didn't buy that this time. I just went for the knobs, the new orbit module, and then of course, regular buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and check out the software that comes with it and kind of just run you through a demo in Lightroom of how this, this whole thing works. So gratefully, they do connect over USB-C. So slowly but surely, every add-on perfect that I own is becoming Thunderbolt 3 backwards compatible or at least USB-C, which is really, really nice. So right away, this thing already turns on and powers up with the uh, splash screen there. And um, you can actually use this module by itself with just uh, these two buttons, which is actually really great for calling. When I'm away from my big desk and I don't wanna carry the rest of these modules with me, um, if I have it set up to work with culling, I have the right key mapped for next photo and the left key set to toggle flag on and off. I really wish they somehow could have built in a third key so I could go forward, backward, and toggle, but I guess that's what this module is for, which annoyingly can't actually snap right on top because of that pin issue. Uh, it'd be so nice if you could just use this as its own little square, but you can't. You gotta use it in this orientation, which is still fine. It's just not quite as compact and elegant, but right off the bat, this is sort of the setup that I would use for culling and I'll show you that in just a second let me now they do have included a ton of like preset profiles to just get you started where, where it pre-assigns stuff based on the app that you're using and you'll notice when you go to create a new profile you hit plus it has you know any app that you have installed and all the profiles that they have pre-made and it also auto adds any app that you currently have open and are running uh, which is really nice if you want to just jump right into making custom profiles uh, right out of the gate. But uh, normally I use Lightroom and what you can do to set up uh, a profile that they've pre-made is go to quick start profiles. You can start dialing in uh, based on like a filter of exactly what modules you have, but I'm just gonna go to library workflow and, and just browse here and see they've got two set up. So that's cool. This is what the profile like auto loads to look like. And by the way, there, there is the ability to change the custom color of the light that goes on the outside of the perimeter of each button and knob and everything. Uh, in fact, I'll just show you every single button and knob has its own light ring around it. And the reason that's super useful is because it's really hard to memorize exactly what button and knob does what sometimes. So you can color code it to help, you know, help you build your muscle memory and, and have a better idea of uh, exactly how you've got it all set up. Uh, let me go back to what I would use for culling, this, this strip here. Right out of the gate, it auto detects how it's connected, but because I generally cull sideways in this orientation, I'm gonna rotate the kit like that so that it mirrors exactly how I'm looking at it. Now, it actually did a pretty good job Actually, no, it didn't. <laughs> I call very differently than what they're assuming with this profile. So in order to change any button uh, at any time, you just click the button itself and then you're presented with all the different options that you can choose from. I'm gonna go to Lightroom mode and go down here to, let's see, I want the right button to be uh, select next photo. Good, done. I want the left button to be select previous photo. That's cool. And then here we'll do, I don't know, toggle pick, toggle reject, five star. That's cool. I actually like how those are set up. At any time, you can actually do a little, uh, whoop, see, this happens a lot. You just pick one up and the others go flying because it feels like they're gonna connect, but they don't. So at any time, you can actually see and get a feel for the latency and the responsiveness of uh, the knobs and the buttons by just moving them, and you'll see that reflected in real time in the Creator app here. And it is very low latency. It's basically instantaneous. As soon as you move anything, um, it totally works. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this connected and load up a a profile, a preset profile that they've made that accounts for all the different modules that I've got. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, how many dials do I have? I got one, two, three, four, five, six dials, four to six dials, one orbiter, and then one, two, three uh, keys. So let's see here. We got the basics panel. I'm gonna load up their basics panel one. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open Lightroom. Now the catch with, uh, 
with any outside MIDI type of controller like this, including the Loop Deck controllers, is that it, it requires third-party software to run in your operating system on top of Lightroom. And one of my complaints about Loop Deck is that their software isn't uh, super great. <laughs> uh, like for example, when you close out of Lightroom with the Loop Deck software, it takes like an extra five to 10 seconds. It's very annoying. It does that with the Monogram software as well, but it's a little bit faster. It's fast enough that it doesn't bother me. Okay, right out of the gate, I'm in the develop edit panel and I should be able, yep, there we go. I can already just start testing out um, if I like how each thing is mapped. Uh, so the big orbiter is set to control exposure. And then it had, like I mentioned earlier, the inner touch point. Uh, by default, it has it set to temperature and tint, which I actually don't like. I don't like using this inner circle touch thing to anything related to photo editing. I just don't find it very predictable and I just can't, it's not precise enough or accurate enough, I'm not sure what the right word is, to uh, to what I'm looking for. So what I would first do um, is adjust one of these knobs to, um, to be temperature and tint. So I never adjust contrast, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that to temperature. I'm gonna change this to tint, and then to remember what each knob is, I'm gonna change the color to correlate with an orange temperature and then a magenta tint. Boom, now I've got I think much faster, much easier uh, adjustable white balance settings by using the knobs instead of this inner thing. But you know, this is meant to mold and sort of fit whatever intuitive, natural thing you wanna set up and what works for your brain and your muscle memory. So you don't have to do exactly what I do by any means. Another common thing I would use this whole setup for is adjusting the crop angle, just to dial in and make sure I have straight, straight horizon lines. So I'm gonna adjust another knob I never use, the vibrance knob, click that, go to crop, then crop angle, change that, and as soon as I move this, boom, it jumps right into the crop tool and it's a very, very smooth, natural transition. It's not too buggy or choppy. There's a little bit of delay depending on how quickly I go, but um, it's really pretty nice. Uh, and if you had you know, a whole series of photos where you're just a little bit off on your horizon, uh, you could adjust things. And then one really nice thing is when you let go and stop for that extra sort of half second hesitation, it, it automatically closes out of the crop tool and lets you get on your way. So you can kind of like look at it for, for a second and be done. And then what I would do, these are actually pressable buttons as well on these knobs. Um, so it looks like right now it's set to when I press it, good, it does what I want. It actually resets. I wonder if there's a way to get it to reset and zoom out. Okay, so if you go down here to customize, Oh, that's really great. I actually didn't realize this until this very moment. If you go to customize instead of just the preset options, when you select a tool like crop angle, you can adjust the sensitivity, the step amount, and sort of the resolution of how, how much it's gonna move. And you can adjust the press. So I want it to reset crop entirely. Uh, and then you can also press and turn for a totally different, it looks like by default they have it set to do a larger. So let's test that. I want it to reset crop. Cool, that's really nice. This is a more smooth, precise, and then if I press and turn, it's much faster. So you can kind of get you know multiple degrees and layers of flexibility and control all from one knob at a time, which is really fantastic, I love that. Uh, for cropping especially, this is a really nice format uh, for editing. So that's a brief overview of how you would use their preset profiles mapped to specific settings in Lightroom and then how to change them to fit your own custom uh, preferences. But at the end of the day, this kind of setup is really nice and fun as a break from what I normally use for editing, but it's still nowhere near as fast and efficient as how I've got better touch tools set up. And if you're a patron, you know that I'm a big proponent of better touch tool. I'll probably go to my grave talking about it because it has sped up and made my life so much easier. It also doesn't require any extra hardware, which is really nice. You always have the exact same keyboard and mouse with you everywhere you go with your laptop. And better touch tool is you know set up to, to act as an override for any popular keyboard shortcuts and uh, 
macro pre-recorded automations of how you might use things. So I still think Better Touch Tool is a much faster way to edit, but this is still very fun for Lightroom, just to take a break, maybe uh, change up your muscles a little bit so you're less prone to RSI issues. Like it's nice to have just a different interface and overall layout. And it looks really, really stylish on a desk. But I'll be honest, the biggest reason um, I love having these is to control Mac OS features and not to edit in Lightroom. Uh, so you can actually create a profile that uses just Finder as its uh, profile mode, and you can set something like the big knob here, the orbital knob or whatever, to be system volume, which I think is really cool. Uh, it's really nice to just have this one huge master knob to control uh, system volume. Uh, you can map, I mapped uh, one button to control monitor brightness, which you probably can't see reflected in my screen recording, but it's really nice to have a button map to monitor brightness. And, and, and I have it set up for a few other Mac OS things that I regularly use. What else is really cool about this is that it's essentially just a MIDI controller, which means if you have other tools like a software instrument and logic, or Better Touch Tool itself, that piece of software I keep talking about. Um, you can actually set up this to do Better Touch Tool triggers. So at my desktop, at my desk downstairs, I have this actually set up in a slightly different orientation, something more like this. I'll insert a picture here actually to show you exactly how it's set up, but um, it kind of hugs around my keyboard in a really nice way. And I've got big, these big chunky buttons now set up mapped to disable better touch tool, enable better touch tool, paste my system password so I don't have to type it in all the time. You can really go crazy with how this thing works. And I find that using it to control my actual computer is how I use this particular setup the vast majority of the time. Um, it's really great and it's worth keeping for that reason alone. Again, it's fun to edit in Lightroom, but it's not nearly as fast or efficient as using keyboard custom keyboard shortcuts uh, you know, via Better Touch tool. If you previously tried Palette Gear and it wasn't a huge help in your overall workflow, this probably won't be either. They've made a lot of refinements. The software seems rock solid. It's not very buggy. It's very fast and responsive, but overall the experience is about the same as using Palette Gear. And then I'm gonna hold my opinion about what I prefer between this and the Loop Deck CT uh, until another video. So if you happen to get some extra holiday money or something like that at the end of this year, maybe pick it up for yourself. It's certainly worth a couple hundred dollars and it looks really cool <laughs> uh, just in general to have on your desk next to everything else. So, so yeah, that's about where I'm gonna end this. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I, again, got the Creative Console Studio. This is the, I think it's the $500 pack, four or $500 pack. So, so it's not exactly cheap. <laughs> um, I would probably recommend getting something like a lens or some other actual photography tool before this first and just stick with better touch tool. Obviously that's way more affordable. And in the end, it's something that I think most people would use more often than this. But, but yeah, those are my thoughts. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments. If there's anything I didn't address or kind of glossed over or just didn't get to, any specific questions, definitely let me know. That seems like a good place to stop. Uh, as always, thank you so much for your attention and have a good day, bye.